In this video, I'll be talking about lighting, particularly lighting characters, but I'll give you hints and tips on lighting in general. And I'll also be showing you two very different characters and talk you through how and why I set up the lighting for each. If you like what I do, then do check out my website and the playlist in the description for more great content. First of all, a big thank you to the sponsors of this video, Nvidia and PC Specialist. As you probably know, Blender's performance is greatly accelerated by NVIDIA RTX GPUs with their RT cores and AI tensor cores, boosting viewport performance, denoising, rendering, and much more. And you'll see that performance boost clearly within this video. PC Specialist are a NVIDIA Studio partner, selling a range of customizable PCs that perform superbly well with Blender. As I've said before, I'm a big fan of PC Specialist and have had a great experience with their PCs. They're leading system builders, specializing in custom PCs and laptops for creators and gamers. PC specialists sell a range of customizable PCs that are NVIDIA Studio certified, meaning the spec has been tested to meet creators' requirements. Configure your next NVIDIA RTX system using PC Specialist's online configurator. I'm using a PC Specialist machine, and because I always get asked, you can see my PC specs on screen here. The star of the show being the RTX 3090, and the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X. I'm extremely happy with it, it's powerful, quiet, and I know it's been built properly with the creator in mind. So a massive thank you to PC Specialist and Nvidia for their support of this channel. So let's take a close look at lighting. So here I am in a simple scene. I've got a floor, which is just a plane, and a monkey, which has a subdivision surface modifier on it with two levels of subdivision, and it's shaded smooth. It's just your basic scene with a simple light up here. And when I click on the light and go to the lighting settings down the bottom here, you can see that it's a thousand watt light and it's pure white. Now the first thing to think about is the size of your scene and the power. At the moment, if I click on my monkey and press N and go to item, you can see that this monkey is pretty massive. It's around two meters big. If I take my whole scene and I'll press N to get rid of the toolbar, scale it right down, can you see how the monkey becomes a lot brighter? So the power of the light, if I click on the power again, depends on how big your scene is. And that of course is quite obvious when you think about it. If I shine a 1000 watt light on something really small like an apple or orange, it will seem really bright. But if I shine that 1000 watt on let's say a truck, it just won't seem as bright. So I'll undo those changes and click on the light again and you can see how much dimmer it seems to be. So do think about the size of your scene when you're configuring the power of your lights. The next thing to think about is distance. If I press G to grab and move my light closer to the monkey, it seems to get brighter. So the closer the light is to objects, the brighter they are. It's something called the inverse square law, which you'll have heard about if you've studied photography. So lights get dimmer the further away they are. So the size of the scene matters when talking about the power, but also the distance of the light from the object. The next thing to talk about is direction. Now at the moment I'm using an omnidirectional light, but it's off to the side of our monkey, and therefore we're getting a nice shadow on the floor and the far side of the monkey here. If I go to top view and press G to grab, bring this around to the front to somewhere like this, you can see that the features of the monkey aren't quite as nice as if I bring it across the side here. So being side on like this gives us these nice shadows. I'll undo that movement. We've lost our nice shadows on the face when it's right in front. So the direction the light's coming from makes a big difference to how your objects will look. Because when you think about it, the shadows are a major part of what gives us the depth information of our objects. So bringing the light across the side and increasing those shadows will help us understand this image. The next thing to think about is the different types of lights. We've got a point light, which is omnidirectional, so it's lighting everything around it. The sunlight is from one direction and its strength is measured differently to the other lights. The other lights are in watts. This just has an arbitrary number and you'll need to bring this down to about one to be similar to a thousand watts of the other ones, of course, depending on the distance. The sun, however, doesn't have a different strength when you move it closer or further away, hence why it doesn't have a wattage, because it's always pointing from the same direction and always the same intensity wherever you put it. So pressing G to grab on a sun lamp doesn't make any difference. The only thing that does make a difference is R to rotate. So if I rotate around the Z axis, you can see the shadow obviously moving there. A sun lamp is great for beginners just to shove a light in the scene and give it some shadows. But generally speaking, you'll probably want to move to the other lighting to create more moody type atmospheres. So that's the sun lamp, spotlight. When I change that, we can hardly see it, but that's because it's one watt. Let's change that to a thousand again, so it's like the point light. And you can see what's going on with the spotlight there. The spotlight size is its cone size, and the blend is the blending of the outside edge 
and you can grab this yellow spot here to point it at different things. So we can point it at our monkey like this. Lastly, we've got the area light, and that's a big flat area like this. And you can change the size of this big flat plane that lights our object. It's a bit like the spotlight, but a big square plane instead. So you can see if I grab it and bring it in, you can see it's not lighting this side. I'll move that back to here. Now with the point light, the spotlight and the area light, the size of the light makes a difference. So if I scale this in, look what happens to the shadows. Scale it right in, we've got very hard shadows. Make it nice and big, we've got very soft shadows. So a bigger light source creates softer shadows. That's something very important for creating mood and atmosphere, which I'll talk more about later. On the spotlight and point light, if I go to the spotlight, if I select my spotlight and press S to scale, it makes my light object bigger, but doesn't actually change the light in any way. However, let's zoom in a bit more and look at the radius. If I bring this down, look at the shadow and how it becomes harder when I bring it down and softer when I bring it up. So the radius of the spot and the same for the point light, if I bring the radius down, shadow becomes harder and up and the shadow becomes softer. The radius is the size of your light. And if I hover over the number, you can see it says shadow soft size to help you remember. So one more thing that will affect the look and feel of your objects is the color, of course. If I come across the color and choose a bluey color, it gives it a nice cool look. Or we can go across to the warm colors on this side of the color wheel. And you can see that's giving it a nice warm look. And I love to play around with the colors to add more interest to my renders. One other thing that's worth mentioning, of course, if I go across to shading and again, change to cycles and under object, change to world. I'll press the home key to find my nodes. At the moment, we've got a gray background with a strength of one. When you're setting up your lighting with your lights around your scene, you may want to change the strength to zero. So you're fully dependent on the lights in the scene and not having any influence from the background. As you can see, if I change this to one, it does light my scene and it lights it with this gray color. If I change it to red, you can see that red is actually lighting our objects. And of course, as you probably know, you can add an HDRI, a high dynamic range image to the background to light the scene. I'll quickly show you that. Shift A to add, texture, environment texture. Make sure you choose an environment texture, not an image texture. I'll quickly open one of those up. Most of these are downloaded from HDRI Haven. And let's get something with a little bit of color. So this sort of autumnal looking thing here and open image hook that up. And now this environment that we can see in the back here is what's lighting our scene. And you can see it's very bright and vivid. And it is actually taking a bit of color from the surroundings. So possibly a little bit of ready greens in there. And if I change this, let's add a different one in. So I'll go for more bluey one here. So you should see a big difference when I change. That's gone a bit more bluey. This one's a bit more ready greeny. Very subtle, but it makes a big difference. And you'll certainly want those in for your reflections if you've got a reflective environment. Okay, so what does this mean in practical terms? Well, here's my female character with the lights and here's my female character without the lights. I'll quickly take you to the shading tab and show you that I have got an HDRI in the background for this one and its strength is 0.5. I'll change this to zero and you can see it completely turns black. So it's offering a soft flat light across my character. So that's my starting point. Let's go back to my layout and talk you through the lights. So the first light is the most important probably, and that's the key light. And you can see that there on one side of our character, and you can see the influence that has on the face. Now it's fairly low in power, but if I click on my head and press N, you can see that the head is probably the right sort of size. So back to the light, 30 watts. It's not that dissimilar to the thousand watt we had with the monkey because that monkey was so much bigger. The most important thing about this particular light is that it's very small. So have a quick think, what is that doing to my character? Well, it's giving us fairly hard shadows. You can see this strand of hair here with a very crisp, hard shadow there. If I make this really big, so scale, you can see a very soft light now, which actually looks quite nice. However, I'll undo that because I use a different light for my soft light, and this one is for highlights. So these nice highlighted bits that are a little bit shiny. This key light being nice and small, reasonably powerful, gives that sort of intensity and shadows, so brings out all the features in the face. Whereas the next one, is this big area light over here. So this is really big and you can see suddenly it fills in this side of the face, but it doesn't take away these harder shadows. So I'll hide it and bring it back. And incidentally, you can really see the power of the NVIDIA RTX there. If I quickly go to the render properties, I've got my denoising on with the optics, which is available on RTX cards. And you can see almost an instant update 
which certainly speeds up my workflow, particularly when it comes to setting up the lights like this. So back to my light and let's select on that light again. You can see the power is only six watts as opposed to 30 watts from this one. If I were to make it the same as the other one, you can see it becomes a lot flatter. It's starting to compete with this one and take away some of the influence of the shadows on this side. So it's quite a weak light, but it gives this side of the face a boost so we can start to see the details within it. This is known as the fill light. And you'll notice that I've set it as green and this one as red. So it's got a sort of green edge to it. It's a bit comic book style, a bit stylized. If this was a realistic character, I'd obviously use more natural colored lights, generally more sort of yellowy colors. And if you look at the color wheel, the natural colored lights are around here, sunlight being close to the middle and artificial lights towards the yellows over here. If you want a moonlight, moonlight tends to be a bit more bluey, but again, it's very subtle, whereas more stylized characters are come out with a bit more saturation. And on this one, you can see the green being quite saturated for a light and offering that character more interest. So after that, we've got the backlight and I've actually got two backlights. It's not always the case that you need two, but I chose to use two. So this one here at 500 watts and this one here at 1000 watts. I tend to have a really bright backlight, which if I go round to the back, doesn't look very good, but I do like that kind of rim light effect. Can you see it on the shoulders there? And you can see it on the back of the hair here and the shoulder there. That really makes the character jump out and pop from the background. The reason I've got two there rather than one big one is because I wanted hard shadows from the backlight. So I kept two really small rather than one big one, which would end up giving me soft shadows. We call this a three point lighting system. So we've got the key light, which is fairly bright with hard shadows, the fill light, which is fairly big, a little bit dimmer than the key light with soft shadows and the backlight tend to be lights with hard shadows. And in my case, I've set them quite high in terms of the power, but that's not always the case. And you can use a lot of experimentation with this. So that's the female character using the classic three point lighting system. So here's a very different type of atmosphere created for this Wolverine character. And I'll be putting a video out over the weekend showing how I made it, but the lighting is giving a very different intensity. It does follow the basic three point lighting system, but I needed a bit more lighting in there to boost certain aspects such as the hair, and highlight certain areas. So I'll quickly go through each of those. So here it is with no lights at all. So we've got an HDRI in the background offering a very small amount of light. I'll quickly go to the shading tab and you can see my world has a strength of 0.23. So it's a good place to start from. The first key light you can see there, very small, quite powerful. However, it's worth saying that if I click on the model, press N, and show you the dimensions. This is a big head. I never resized it to be the right size. So it is two meters big and click on the light again. So the power of the light is obviously influenced by the size of this object and therefore doesn't seem as bright as 150 watt on a real size face. I've given it a bit of color again. It's got this sort of pinky tone and across to the reds to give it that sort of angry look. And again, it's very small. So we've got a nice lot of detail in these shadows. The second key light, if you watch what happens particularly to the eyes, you can see that it offers just this tiny sparkle in the eyes and you can see it quite quickly thanks to the RTX 3090. It's wonderful having that almost real time performance. So if I click on the light, it's only 15 Watt, which is very dim for such a big object. It's close to white. So I get sort of white reflections on the eyes. And that's the main reason I was using this light quite small, but all I really wanted it for was these tiny reflections, which offer life to your character. If I turn it off and on, it makes very little difference to the actual lighting of the face, except this tiny reflection in the eyes. Then we've got the fill light off to the side. Now, if I turn that on and off, you can see that it doesn't offer a huge amount. Let's click on that. It's only 10 Watts and it's got a greeny color because I like to vary the color from one side to the other. It helps gives my characters depth, but that green light is just filling in the side here that little bit. So very minor. It is quite big, so it offers soft shadows. So it doesn't fight with the intensity of the shadows coming from this side. And that's quite important with your fill light. Then I've got my back lights, back left and back right. And you can see instantly that highlights the hairs. And again, both of those 300 watt and 300 watt as well. And again, it helps our character pop out from the background. Now the extras on this one, I've got a fill back. And if I click on that, it's a big light that's offering a bit more intensity to the top of the hair because the hair was such an important feature in this model. Again, if I click on that, it's the same color, blue, very powerful. And if I go around to the back of the model, again, it doesn't look that great from the back, 
but it helps it pop out when I come to the front like this. So these back lights really highlighting the dynamic qualities of this hair. Lastly, I've got two front top just there. So if I come around to the side, you can see that's coming down the top and you can see the difference that makes. Just gives a little bit of shape and substance to the top of the hair here. So if I turn that off, it sort of blends into itself a little bit and turn it on. You can see it just highlights areas of that hair and gives the hair a bit of substance, a bit of depth, so you can make out the shape. I've given that a more purpley color just to offer a little bit of difference to the light blues at the back here, and it's a lot less powerful than the other ones. Then we've got the front top two, and see what happens to the face with this one. If I turn it off and then on again, and let's actually select that one there, you can see that it's coming right down the front, hitting these hairs here and giving them shadows onto the face. And I was just experimenting there, having a bit of fun, seeing if I could get some intensity in the shadows. Let's turn it off and see it's a little bit flat at the moment. Turn it on and we've got a bit more intensity under the eyes, highlighting the sort of deep crevices of the face. So those are all the lights of the Wolverine character. And you can really see the difference that makes, giving it a much more aggressive, intense look, as opposed to that sort of more romantic look of the female character. So there we have it, that's how I go about lighting my characters. The main thing is to experiment and have a bit of fun, but hopefully the fundamentals of distance from your object, the direction of the light, the color of the light, the size of the light source, those fundamentals will help you to add character and show off the shape of your objects. Big thanks once again to PC Specialist and Nvidia for making these tutorials much easier to make. And of course, a thanks to Blender for their advancements giving almost real-time feedback in cycles. And thanks to you out there for watching and all your support. I'll see you next time.